Hi, I'm Malik King, Macro and Technical Desk Analyst at Barclays Capital. Today we're going to be talking about technical tools, trading trends. So a few things we're going to hit today, identifying major trends, use of confirmed trend lines, uh, how to use multiple time frames, uh, trading with the trend, and then reversing uh, the direction of trading on trend breaks. Identifying major trends. Uh, basically, we're just looking for your highs and lows moving in the same direction. You know, this essentially means if we're seeing higher highs uh, and higher lows, then that's going to be an uptrend. If we're seeing lower highs, lower lows, that's a downtrend. If we see anything else, right? if it's higher highs but lower lows or vice versa, anything other than those highs and lows moving in the same direction is going to tend to be a sideways trend or consolidation. Uh, we're also going to take a look at major and minor trends and uh, making sure that we're identifying you know, what setup we're in. So one quick example here, uh, looking at IBM back in 2008 through 2010, you know, we saw all examples of all three. So we first, uh, back in late 2008, had a major downtrend. We're seeing lower lows and we're seeing lower highs all the way down through November of 2008. Uh, but starting November of 2008, we see a low. Uh, we get a higher low in March. We get a higher low in July uh, of 2009. And we're getting higher highs throughout. So this is going to be a very clear uptrend of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, but then from December to January of uh, 2009 to 2010, you know, for that next six to eight months throughout most of 2010, we basically saw a consolidation. This was a sideways or range-bound uh, period for the security where we had no real progress in either direction. We had slightly lower highs uh, and we had lows that were mostly in around the same area. So we also want to look at major and minor trends. Now on the left we have you know, an intraday chart that basically is looking at a one-minute chart of uh, research in motion a few weeks ago. You know, we've got towards the middle of the day this you know, uptrend, which is what's circled with a green arrow. But if you're trading that uptrend, you understand that that's within the context of a larger downtrend that the stock had been in for most of the day. To this chart on the right, we see a multi-year chart uh, looking at Apple. So this was a clear, well-defined major uptrend with higher lows, higher highs throughout. But within that, you know, we're highlighting a, a period of about eight months or so where there was a prolonged downtrend. So you had lower lows here and here, and you had lower highs, you know, just under this red arrow, right? But in each case, we're making sure that we're aware if we're trading the, the smaller trend, that trend is uh, a major trend for trends that are smaller, but it's also a minor trend for trends that are larger than it. And we want to understand that, that larger context. So we also want to take a look at confirmed trend lines. Right? Any two points can create a line. Right? And so that basically ends up being, once we've drawn a trend line with two points, it's only a potential trend or a potential trend line. Uh, and the next time the stock or security gets close to that line, it's a potential support or potential resistance. Once we've got three trend lines, it's a confirmed trend line, uh, which makes it A, more likely to serve as support and resistance, but B, it makes a break much, much more significant. And it makes a break much more likely to tell us that the, that significant trend has actually changed and we're going to continue moving in the other direction. Uh, we also want to take a look at channels which are you know, effectively two parallel trend lines containing the entire uh, move. So here we're looking at a period across the S&P back to the 1932 lows. Yeah, this is what you know, some might refer to as the kind of mother of all trend lines for the, for the S&P, as it's contained basically 50 years of secular bear market bonds. Uh, so here we had a period uh, looking at just these green circles, in 1932, that major bottom, the major bottom in 42 and 49, uh, back in 74 to 75, uh, and again in 1982, and came relatively close to it at the uh, 2009 bottom as well. Um, so each of these situations, that ends up being really very significant. 
Yeah, so this ended up being a confirmed trend line once we got this third point here in 1949. At that point, we're really looking for that trend to hold. And if it does end up breaking, that becomes re really quite significant. Here's an example of one that actually does break. So taking a look at uh, a chart of Alcoa going back about 30 years to 1981-82. We saw this low holding, holding again, 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 again. So you have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, there's more than ten or, or so uh, touch points here in this major uptrend holding across 30 years. Right? Well, at that point, you've got that confirmed trend that's held for a long period of time. Once it does break, that is a big, big warning that you're looking at a major trend change. And that's exactly what we saw as the stock erased effectively 20 or 25 years of progress you know, in a relatively short period of time. So here we have a, another significant piece where we're looking at confirmed trend lines. Uh, channels. Right, so that same trend line that we saw on S&P has a, a similar, uh, call it parallel, on uh, the Dow. So looking back, we had 1932 low, 42, 49, uh, and then went up here in uh, the 50s uh, as well. So the parallel to this trend line, you know, which held for a number of decades, you know, we're also seeing up here, uh, which served as support back in the 1930s a couple of times, served as resistance here in the 40s, served as resistance again here in the 50s on multiple occasions. Yeah, so those channels uh, and the, the parallel trends can also serve as uh, relatively significant uh, points of potential support or resistance and areas that we should be keeping our, our minds on when we're trading these trends. Uh, a quick word on logarithmic versus arithmetic charts. Uh, the both tend to be useful. Uh, my default tends to be to a log chart, uh, especially on longer term charts covering larger price ranges. Uh, one of the reasons is, you know, at the end of the day, if a stock is supposed to be discounting uh, future value, right, if the value of the company is growing at, let's say, 3% or 5% a year, right, that's geometric growth rates. So if you grow 5% a year every year, you know, you're going to see you know, what would effectively be this exponential move higher. Right, and so if you want you know, a straight trend line you know, that's going to continue to contain these support points or resistance points, uh, a logarithmic chart does a better job of mirroring those, uh, that geometric growth, right? whether it's slower growth or whether it's faster growth. It does a better job of catching those. So especially over long periods of time or, or larger uh, moves, the, the log charts tend to do a better job catching those. Nonetheless, it's still useful to check arithmetic occasionally. So here we just have a quick example looking at uh, that same 30-year trend line on Alcoa. You know, on a log chart, we've got 30 years of touch points you know, going from 1982 or so uh, all the way up to 2000, all the way up to 2007, um, and serves very consistent throughout. Right, that same trend line, if we tried to draw it from the, the same low uh, on an arithmetic chart, you know, it does still actually serve as support for about five or six years. At that point, it tends to be no longer useful. Why? Because the growth, that exponential growth in the company has you know, exceeded the uh, you know, ar basically ar arithmetic trend line. Yeah. But we can still find some use over shorter periods of time for that five-year period here with the green line and white trend line here looking back in what was effectively the late 80s to, to early 90s. And we're seeing that serve actually into the future even as resistant uh, a couple of times uh, a decade or more later. Uh, so using multiple time frames, we want to get a sense of impulsive versus corrective trends. You know, the best risk reward setups tend to be when the minor trend and the major trends line up. Right? So if you've been in a major uptrend, you consolidate for a bit and then get a breakout you know, and are continuing to move in the same direction as that, that, major, uh, that major trend. And then still we're keeping in mind that this is relative. So a steeper elongated trend is more impulsive. 
and a shallower, flatter, more overlapping trend is more corrective. And that's particularly when you know, on declining volume or such. Uh, the rule of thumb is that corrective moves have a tendency to be followed by a continuation of the preceding trend. And you will find that you know, a move that's clearly corrective you know, two-thirds or more uh, of the time you know, is going to be uh, followed by a continuation of the preceding move. So here's one quick example just looking at the Dow uh, going back for the last 1940-ish uh, you know, to, to 2000. You know, we see both uh, on a major or large big picture basis, we see a large impulsive up move from the 1942 low up through the 1960s. You know, we then see this sideways, more corrective, overlapping action uh, from the 60s through the early 80s. Yeah, and that, again, is followed by this you know, up move or this follow through move uh, in the same as that original direction. You know, on a smaller scale basis, we can actually break each one of those impulsive move down, moves down as well. If we just look at the period from 42 to, to the early 60s, you know, we had within that an up, impulsive up move, you know, this sideways or corrective move. And then you know, once you've broken out to the upside, that follow through move in the same direction. So we can make use of the fact that you know, if we can identify an impulsive move and then this corrective move within it, once we get that, uh, that breakout, right, we have a good sense that you know, the market or the security is going to continue moving that same direction. Just putting it all together, as a general rule, we want to trade with a trend until it breaks. Uh, sometimes pays to wait for a move past the last support or resistance uh, prior to a trend break, and we'll look at a quick example of that in a minute. Uh, and you, know, you can also reverse directions on a break, assuming we're, we're looking at uh, confirmed trends. Yeah, so this is just one, you know, it looks like Star Wars, I know. So it's a very busy slide, but just uh, look at a couple of pieces of it. So this is just looking at a period from late 2009 through late 2010, uh, which contained both a number of uptrends, which are these uh, dashed lines in white, you know, and a number of confirmed you know, downtrends uh, as well. So if we were trading these breaks, if you're, let's say, long, this is looking at the S&P. If you're long the S&P back in late 2009, you know, and by you know, December or early January of 2010, you've got this now confirmed as you've hit one, two, three touch points you know, uptrend. Right? right here in mid to late January, we get a break of that uptrend and a, what happens to also be a simultaneously break of uh, preceding support point. You know, that, since it was a confirmed uptrend, tells us the trend has changed. We now want to be trading on what's effectively the short side or would ex expect that the index is going to continue lower from there. So one, two, three, you now have a confirmed downtrend line from the highs uh, by early February. So at this point, you've got three to four touch points and you break that downtrend. You know, you've now broken a confirmed trend line and the expectation is now that you know, the trend has effectively changed to uh, headed higher again. All right? Continuing that same thing, one, two, three, four, confirmed uptrend, five, six, you get a break of that confirmed uptrend here. Yeah, and so that's the warning that you're changing direction again. Um, you don't actually break that prior support point until a couple of weeks later, but you were close to the high. So by early May, you're again breaking to the downside and breaking that prior support. And at this point, we're looking for a trend change again. So you're following that down uh, into the June lows. You're following up again through July. You're following down again into the July lows, up again. And so you can see how you might continue doing this and just making use of these confirmed trend lines to trade in both directions and to get a very good sense. You know, it's not 100% accurate, but nothing is. But to get a very good sense of which way the either major market or which way a particular security uh, is moving with just the use of these trend lines. So this concludes the segment on trading trends. 
Uh, for the Market Technicians Association, I'm Malik King, Macro and Technical Desk Analyst at Barclays Capital. Thank you for joining us today.